Lord God, today we celebrate LWML. This month we celebrate the Great Reformation. Both times were times of turmoil, temptation, tension. And yet you were there. And you showed yourself to be faithful to people. People back in Luther's time, people back in the early 1940s, and in people responding to you, you showed yourself to be faithful. Great in your faithfulness to us. Bless us today, Lord, with this same faithfulness of your character. And help us this day to be ready to share your faithfulness to all the world and all God's people pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As I just prayed, we're, this month we're celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Reformation from 1517 to 2017. 500 years have gone by since the time that Martin Luther took a piece of paper and 95 theses on it and he nailed it to the church door where he was going to church at and going to the seminary and teaching. And he said, I got some problems here. And he listened them up on the door. And he had every, all the people there started reading them and it turned into chaos. It, the king of Germany got involved. The pope uh, and, and the world got involved. And Martin Luther was attacked with vengeance by people who disagreed with what he talked about. By many others, though, were impacted. And back in that time, it was the invention of the printing press. And so then a printing war went out, and people started learning to uh, read, were reading the vernacular language, and they started printing everything. And then Martin Luther says, you know what? People need to read for themselves. They need to open up, have God's Word that they can read in their common language. And so he translated the Bible, and he got whisked away into, uh, into different places, different castles, to be saved and protected from those who were attacking him, wanted to kill him. And they wanted to kill him because he said, Here I stand. Show me where I'm going wrong. Tell me where I'm wrong that it says you need to pay money to receive forgiveness of sins. Why was this such a big thing for him? Well, it was simple. He had spent most his time in, in the uh, monastery, and he spent most of his time driving his confession conf uh, confessor, father confessor, nuts. Because every time he discovered a sin in his thought or his word or his action, he'd run to his confessor and tell him. And then he'd go and do indulgences. And then he would go do good, good deeds and good works. And it, it didn't sit right with Martin. He was bothered deeply. And then he had that tower experience where he's reading through the book of Romans. And when he read through Romans, I just happened to be reading it these last couple of days. When he read through Romans, here's what he came across where finally a light broke through the stormy clouds in his world and his life, and it finally came to start sinking in that he could understand and grasp how he could stand before God and not be consumed by his anger or his wrath against sin. Because he knew in his heart of hearts, he knew in his mind that he was a sinner and he couldn't do anything to save himself. So he was angry. He was mad at God. And he was mad at God because... According to his understanding, God was mad at him because of his sin. And he got to the point at the end of his rope, he's going, why try? Why do anything? Why try to be good? I can't save myself. And here's what he came across. Obviously, the law applies to those whom it was given. For its very purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. You got that right, God. We're all guilty. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. What? Nobody can be made right with God 
before God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. You got that right, God. I know my sin. But now, but now, God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised long ago by the prophets of Moses' writings. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone, whoever believes, no matter who we are. We're not made right by obeying the law or trying our best to keep the law. We're not made right by trying to appease God. To earn His favor. We don't muster up our heart, our mind, our body, our energy to go, I'm going to do right this week. And then fail. Sooner and later. We don't. Nothing has changed. This is another year of reformation. And in our reading for today, we read in our reading for today, in 2 Timothy, Paul is talking to Timothy. I kind of like that since my name is Tim or Timothy. And he's going, Timothy! Timothy! And so I can read this for myself, but the actual truth is this is for all of us. And he says, you know what? You need to be ready in season, out of season, to t- declare, to tell, to share, to testify the good news. You need to exhort. You need to admonish. You need to correct. You need to encourage people with the truth because people are going to raise up people who will tickle They're itching ears, and the people will be easy to fall away from the truth and listen after to listen after wives' tales, thoughts, and myths. They're going to be apt to turn away. So I ask you, how true is this passage to us today? How many of you start your day? with God's truth or somewhere during your day take a time out and hear and read God's truth how many even here today when they get stressed out worried and troubled go you know what I'm getting tense here you know what I'm under attack here you know what I need some help here you know what I need some God time in my life and we go to God in his word and he speaks to us good news so today I'm just merely sharing the history and God's word that says Timothy Tim people are going to wander from the truth you need to be ready to exhort them encourage them correct them to read God's word be in relationship with him. LWML. That's what LWML is about. LWML, Lutheran Women Missionary League. Started in 1940s. Started in a time of turmoil and tension in World War. The World War. The United States decides to join the war in 1941, 1942, some month in 1942. A hundred women get together in Chicago and says, you know what? All of our men are going overseas to volunteer and, and, and are being recruited to go to war. And they started filling the workplaces. And they said, we need to start encouraging people. We need to start comforting people. And above and beyond the Missouri Synod collection of offering from the churches, let's contribute our little pennies, our little mites, and let's get little boxes, and women can contribute and make a difference in the world. And not only with their little mites, their little pennies, but we're going to support them. We're going to have them come together and encourage them. And through Bible study and fellowship, women grew strong. That's what today is supposed to be about. Lutheran Women Missionary League. 
missionary league, a league of being missionaries to one another, to those around them, their neighbors, and even across the world at very diff- various points from being s- small and local to being in a, in a bigger geographical area to the world. They're making a difference and impact throughout the world. Martin Luther did. Here we are, Alexandria, Minnesota. 500 years later, we're talking about him and how he sh- shared the wor- uh, changed the world because he opened up God's word and said, huh, there's a better way. There's a way that gives me joy. You mean I don't have to be perfect? I'm saved because of God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And God used him and those around him to shake the very foundation of truth in this world. And I would say nothing has changed. Today is our turn. Today is our time. Today is our place to be in the journey, to answer the call, to hear the good news, to believe the good news, and to gather together to do it ourselves individually in small groups and families, at homes and in workplaces and in people's homes, and to encourage one another, strengthen one another, rejoice with one another. Hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. We are going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. Let's keep letting it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Did you notice the kids from the front room, the front rows, and then they got a little older, a little taller, the middle rows, they got a little older, a little taller, the back rows, they got to the back row, they're on the top of the back row, a few of them were having a, some fine times, smiling, but I, I don't know about show. no, I'm going to let it shine. I did I don't know, but you eh, maybe. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm not picking on them, but I'm pointing them out because why is it that these little children are like this and then as a few years and months go by they just keep progressing to Shine it around the world. Yes. I'm going to let it shine. No matter what my age is, I'm going to let it shine. In this church and outside too, we can let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You. You. We're saying to by our kids, and we smiled, and we laughed, and we rejoiced. And when the one little boy kept singing to the king, that I started saying, I need to sing it with him. But then after that, he stopped singing it. The king. Remember the king at the end of the, end of the verse? And then he kind of felt bad, so I kind of smiled at him and winked at him, said, good job. It was like I was encouraging him. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm doing the same with you. You've heard the gospel. You've got the good news. You've heard the good news. You've been baptized. You've been anointed. You've been healed. You've been strengthened. You've been loved. You've been forgiven. You've been chosen. You've been picked. Do not reject. Do not avoid the wonderful blessing of being a believer in Christ. And don't let the world snuff it out. Don't let the devil snuff it out. Don't. Dare to stand and let your light shine. Because the world, our sinfulness inside us, the devil, the enemies of God are going to try to snuff it out. And I don't have to just point to the back couple of rows of the children. I can point that out to the rest of us, myself included. I was encouraged today by the kids. 
I was uplifted today by the kids. I was uplifted by the ladies I visited with this last Zone LWML rally in Zion the other day. I heard I missed a great speaker. He's, Pastor, Pastor, he's telling us the same thing you're telling us. Go out there and tell everybody. Talk to everybody. Celebrate and rejoice with people. Connect with others and share with them. Be ready to share with them the good news. Are you? Are you hiding it under the bushel? No. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you been equipped? Are you trained? Have you been taught? Do you know? It's all like a Southern Baptist preacher. Today is a good day. Today is a celebration day. Today is LWML Sunday day when women are celebrating and they're calling to be an extra calling, an extra circle, an extra connection to support one another, to encourage one another. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's great. In fact, in the church where I came from, are we doing the, are we, I, uh, I'm not going to say anything. Are we doing the pledge? I forgot. Are we doing the pledge? Yeah, we're doing the pledge. I love the pledge. It's a good pledge. Use the words of the pledge. Two, Respond to God's faithfulness. Not earning, not trying to deserve, not have to, you get to. To respond to God's great faithfulness to us. 500 years later, and God is still faithful. He still watches over us. He still cares for us. His faithfulness endures forever and through everything. Yeah, I could keep going. I'm done for the day. Because in the Old Testament reading, we see, and we're going to be looking at Psalm 105 today, 103 today, I believe, uh, 105, 106 in the next couple of Sundays. Um, you can come to church, you can br- go to church, and you can leave. But if you're not in the Word and you're not in the truth, I want to exhort you to get in the Word and get in the truth. In adult fellowship hour, in Sunday school hour, that's what we're doing. We're getting to learn to get in the Word together, reading the Word, talking about the Word, and applying it in our lives. If you're not doing it in church, are you doing it at home? And if you're not, I'm using today's opportunity to tell you, get in the Word of truth. Let God get into you. Let God show you His faithfulness in His Word of truth. It will touch you. It will change you. It will transform you just like it did Martin Luther. Just like it did to women back in 1942. The same faithfulness exists today. Today's devotion, Luther and Our Ministry. Who read it? Luther and Our Ministry on your phone. You didn't? Check it out. You did, Gene? Isn't that perfect for today? It's a good one. Ready? Got a minute. Cut me off in a minute. I forget his name. He's Russian. He hates people in Russia who went to prison. He got married, had kids. Guess what? Found himself in prison. Found himself in prison trying to escape, being mean to the guards, always trying to escape, escaping, getting shot at, not getting killed, going back into prison. One day, out of nowhere, somebody came into the church and told him that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior, and he can save him from his sins to change his heart, turn to Jesus, and you will live, and everything's possible for you. And God is a God who brings people back to families and starts them over. Guy goes, what's up with this? How does he know all that about me? He came to faith in Jesus Christ. A few months later, he was supposed to be in prison for seven years, He was serving for seven years. He got out. He started going back to prison. This time, not because he was going to prison. He was visiting prison, handing out tracts, Bible study correspondences, and telling other prisoners how God can change their lives. That just happened. This year. 
And somebody wrote about it and said, God can change your life. He changed mine. That's pretty much the devotion for the day. Is that about right? All right. Yeah, it was... E- yeah, I tried to, too. It's a really long one, and it's pretty cool. Here's a man in Russia come to the faith in Jesus Christ because somebody came to the prison and dared to tell him, shining his light even in prison, to tell somebody else the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Guard and keep our faith in Jesus Christ. We continue now.